that's the come hither. So when you have cattle in a, in a ranch for periods of time, they learn. They know where the good feed is at different times of the year, and they know how to get to the water and how far away it is and what's a reliable water source. It's nice to see a little wet spot here and there from, from that last rain a couple weeks ago. Came a little, little too late, about a month too late, but we'll take it. The drought's absolutely terrifying. When you're ranching and running livestock for a living full time, I mean, you rely on, on income from, from your livestock. And when you don't have the forage, you don't have the water available, and you're not running the numbers of cattle, um, you know, the economic sustainability is a lot of times not there. Come on, girl, say. Our parents, our grandparents have gone through some pretty bad droughts. This is, this is a bad one, uh, but it hasn't deterred me from, from wanting to do this one bit. It's just another challenge, another bump in the road. Some of the things that we've done out here on this ranch uh, to, to work with the drought have been to um, reduce numbers uh, pretty significantly. Uh, we preg checked early and cold early and weaned about two months early this year. We also uh, have been developing water systems, spreading out water troughs uh, as far as we can in order to spread the cattle out and make them utilize the forage that is available. So this is a, one of the new water troughs that we're putting in right now. It's about just over 400 gallons of storage here. Plus we're going to put a 2,500 gallon tank on top of this hill here that's going to be fed by a natural spring system that's several hundred feet down this hill. We're going to be putting a solar panel and solar pump system in to bring it up to the hill here and then down to this trough so we can distribute the livestock better. This pond here specifically holds water till about the middle of summer. It's vital to the cattle, the way they utilize this property. They need water source at the top of the hill, otherwise a lot of this forage will go to waste. We're working with the NRCS, the Natural Resource Conservation Service, uh, and Save Mount Diablo, who owns the property, to work on a pond restoration project. We do have California tiger salamanders and red-legged frogs in the area. Uh, a pond on the other end of the ranch here actually has um, red-legged frogs in it now. It's been been looked at and there's there's tadpoles in there and they're liking it. My grandfather passed away when I was about four uh, going on five but he he did give my brother and I each a cow before that and uh, we I ended up with blue cheese a blue roan cow that I uh, just paid attention to and loved her and loved watching her calve every year and then through the years we've learned a lot uh, from my dad and my grandfather about conservation practices to run cattle uh, sustainably and, and with economical and ecological goals. Yeah, my father's been a huge inspiration uh, in my life and I know he has to my sister as well. Seeing him involved in rangeland management got my sister and I both inspired to somewhat follow in his footsteps. In 2011, he was fortunate enough to be awarded the Aldo Leopold Conservation Award for his rangeland management and ranch management practices on our home ranch there in Sonoma, California. With livestock grazing management, it's not just the cattle, it's taking care of the land the cattle are on. Um, it's managing the ecosystems at the same time as you're managing the livestock, and that's all things I'm passionate about. There's never been a time in my life that I have wanted to do anything other than ranching and, and running cattle. Every day I wake up and cows are on my mind and how I can, how I can fit livestock and how I can fit rangeland management into uh, my life and each and every day is, is what I wake up to do. Girls.